Let's take a look at question 10. On which of the following points would the authors of both passages most likely agree? Okay, so we know we're being asked to compare the opinions, the points of view of the two passages. And we know from our active reading what the passages are about. But there's no point in us making a prediction here, because they might agree about lots of stuff. All the information we need is in the choices. We need to find the one choice that we have evidence to show both authors would agree with. So let's dive in, one at a time. Choice A. Would the authors both agree that computer-savvy children tend to demonstrate better hand-eye coordination than do their parents? This one's kind of tempting. The author of Passage 1 might agree with this, but I'm not sure about the author of Passage 2. I don't think we have enough information to infer the author's view on this, but I'm going to leave it in for now. Okay, let's move on to B. Um, would they agree that those who criticize consumers of electronic media tend to overreact in their criticism? Is anyone actually criticizing the consumers of electronic media here? I don't think they are. Passage 2 criticizes the media critics, but that's not criticizing the consumers, the people that are actually consuming the media. I feel pretty confident that we can safely eliminate this. Choice C. Do the authors of both passages agree that improved visual spatial skills do not generalize to improved skills in other areas? This one's interesting. I'm going to take a quick look at D before I return to this. Choice D. Internet users are unlikely to prefer reading on-screen texts to reading actual books. I don't think either passage gave us information to support this choice. So we don't have sufficient information to infer the author's views on this, which means we can just safely cross it out. Okay, so on test day, if I were pressed for time, I might just circle C and move on, because I'm pretty sure that passage 2 didn't compare children to adults, and that leaves me with C. And process of elimination is a very handy tool on some hard questions. But for the purposes of this video, let's go back to C, and let's see if we can find information in the passages that gives us reason to infer that both authors would agree with this statement. So improved visual spatial skills do not generalize to improved skills in other areas. Oh, yeah, here we go. Uh, I found the part where I marked trade-off, and this is exactly the evidence I needed. So this is the bit about Patricia Greenfield, the developmental psychologist. And in her study, she concludes that every medium develops some cognitive skills at the expense of others. So our growing use of the net and other screen-based technologies has led to the widespread and sophisticated development of visual spatial skills, but those gains go hand in hand with a weakening of our capacity for the kind of deep processing that underpins mindful knowledge acquisition, etc. Okay, so for passage one, this does not generalize to an improvement in other areas, right? In fact, passage one concludes that it's a trade-off. The better you get at visual spatial reasoning, the worse you get at deep processing. Let's see what passage two has to say. Ooh, okay. If you train people to do one thing, they get better at doing that thing, but almost nothing else. Music doesn't make you better at math. Conjugating Latin doesn't make you more logical. Brain training games don't make you smarter. So if getting good at one thing doesn't make you good at another different thing, then we can surmise, quite reasonably, that he would agree with the idea that improved visual spatial skills do not generalize to improved skills in other areas. Yeah, this textual support gives me enough information to infer that both authors would agree with C. And that means we have our answer. The big takeaway here is don't get bogged down in these questions. As you just saw, the only way to be sure that you have the right answer to these is to actually find textual evidence that suggests that each author would agree with the statement. And if you can find that evidence, you're done. However, if you tend to run out of time on the reading test, these are questions that you could consider skipping. They can take a lot of time, and there are likely easier, quicker questions waiting for you further along in the test. Good luck out there. You've got this.